Hi, my name is Vincent Morewang, and I'm the Advisory Services Manager at KeyWealth, which is uh, a local investment advisory firm. We focus on uh, individual investors, um, uh, very less so on institutional investors. Now, there's recently been an outbreak that everyone is actually panicking about, which is the COVID-19 uh, novel uh, coronavirus. And, you know, obviously, just like any other type of outbreak or pandemic or epidemic, this has major implications on the financial system, on financial services, our ability to get products into the market, um, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, the performance of, of financial products um, in the market as well. So now there's been a recent question that came up. Um, you know, on social platforms, social media platforms, as well as, uh, you know, uh, business social platforms, which is when the, the virus broke out, the epidemic broke out, a lot of stock markets started tanking. You know, um, the, the, I remember the, the, on, on the JSE, is it the JSE that fell by a couple of points? Um, you know, the, the, the NASDAQ fell by a couple of points um, and many other, you know, um, stock markets that you know have tanked now of all these that have tanked and fallen the only one that hasn't is the Botswana stock exchange um, and therefore the question is why why has this been the case why do we seem unaffected by you know everything that is going on in the world today and it's just about really um, you know what is happening in the country at the moment how our stock exchange was established you know the type of uh, information available in the market etc etc um, now just to uh, break it down for you just a little bit um, a stock market just like any other market is something that is controlled by the laws of demand and supply right so integral to any stock price or in any market whatsoever is demand and supply that is the the foundational you know uh, influencer and determinant of of the price everything else that is associated with um, that demand and supply uh, is also a determinant, but that is uh, the key factor. So now, when you talk about uh, the performance of the market as a whole, something that is usually used is called an index or indices. Um, for those that are, you know, uh, not too aware of the financial services sector, you always see on television when it comes to the business news, you have uh, NASDAQ, uh, you know, the FTSE, S&P 500, et cetera, et cetera. Now, these are just mathematical averages of all the, the stocks that are in that particular market. Um, so you simply just add them up and then, you know, uh, get them averaged just to show you, um, you know, how the market is performing at that particular point. Now, the Botswana average, um, you know, when you talk about the, the index has actually shot up. It has gone up by, even though it's not by a lot, um, but it has, it has actually gone up. So now the question is why, right? The first thing is, in our country, a lot of investors in the stock market are institutional investors. So what does this mean? This means that you know, funds um, as well as other uh, institutions that have a vested interest in you know, investing in the local equity market um, you know, have, have, have done so and therefore with the intention of making money. Now, the, the, the objectives of institutional investors and individual investors are obviously the same but the desire uh, for returns and how quickly they want to get their money back is what would differ. So whereas uh, individual investors would maybe want their money uh, over a shorter period of time, uh, in institutional investors tend to you know, hold the stocks for a longer period of time. So that means even during periods where there's a crisis uh, such as these, um, you know, they, they wouldn't necessarily be affected by that because they're trying to hold uh, for the long term. So the, the Botswana Stock Exchange is characterized by a lot of institutional investors. So this affects something called market liquidity, okay, which is uh, the just general business activity around buying and selling, right? So when we did a research some time ago around around the Botswana Stock Exchange. We found that individual investors aren't too active in the market. Ideally, what's supposed to happen is when you have money in the Botswana Stock Exchange, whenever you share any type of piece of information that speaks to the stock that you've invested in, then what you should uh, be doing is making a decision based off of that information. Now, that means calling your broker immediately and saying, look, uh, can you, can you, 
can you sell my stock or can I buy this type of stock? You should actually have your broker out speed dial. Now that's not the case with a lot of individual investors. Another realization that we have is um, no, uh, just outside participation is uh, you know something called financial inclusion and big ups to the Botswana Stock Exchange for you know consistently trying to get as many people um, knowledgeable about the stock exchange as possible so because we don't have a lot of individual investors um, most of them are financially excluded um, and we have a lot of institutional investors in the Botswana Stock Exchange this affects just the general movement of prices uh, because most investors don't care about what's happening. They're holding this thing for the long term. They want to see uh, the company that they invest in grow over 10 or 20 years, etc., uh, etc. Et so relating it to the issue of demand and supply, whenever a product is in demand, the price goes up. Whenever a product is not in demand, no one wants it, the price goes down. And what should happen, therefore, is when you are worried that the, the, the stock price, um, the stock prices or the stock market, you know, is going to perform badly or the company that you have invested in is going to perform badly because of the virus. Let's say borders get closed and therefore, you know, the company is not able to make any sales over a six month period, um, whether it's restrictions. Um, of, of interactions such as people in financial services and advisory, uh, then that definitely should speak to you to say, my company, the company that I've invested in or the stock that I've invested in might not perform so well. So therefore I need to dump it. And this is where demand goes down and drive, uh, uh, drives the price down. Um, and the opposite is also true. So when you relate it now to the Botswana Stock Exchange, like I said, the issue is really just about this type of demand and supply. A lot of indiv institutional investors are holding on to their stocks. They don't react to any type of market information. This is where you get a situation where, you know, the, the stock market seems to be immune to market forces um, and any other type of information that could possibly influence uh, the, the stock price. Okay. so. This is um, uh, something that you know you relate to uh, uh, the market uh, eff efficiency hypothesis, right? Uh, efficient market hypothesis in finance, right? There's there's uh, different levels to it. There's the weak form, there's the there's the there's the strong form, uh, and something in between. So this therefore means that the Botswana Stock Exchange is not efficient because the market does not react to all the information um, around it. It doesn't matter what type of information it is. Um, if the market doesn't react, then that means it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not efficient, whether it's historical data, whether it's current data, or whether it's uh, market sentiment, uh, and all these other things, right? So our institutional investors could be the ones that are driving the stock market up and down, but because they hold on to the money for, uh, for to, sorry, to their investment for a while, uh, that means that you know we we get a situation where even during a crisis there's no reaction uh, from our market. That's it.